You're now listening to Box Power Sound. Brought to you by Bel Air. With the Bahamas, they're going crazy with sunshine. I told them they got to have a big bag for you to come out there. <laughs> <laughs> Bahamas is going to be crazy. Big bag. Yo, yo. Joey Craig. Joey. What up? What up? <laughs> Joe, I, I, I seen you was in Bahamas with Khaled, man. Y'all got to buy that house over there. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy. He's an honorary Bahamian, to be honest. You're going to get your passport there, too. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to mute my mic. That's how I'm mute. Bahamas is always a good idea. <laughs> For real, Yeah, I, I, I actually need to go myself. Um, all right, so let's get started. Uh, all right, welcome to Box Power Sound. This is episode 16. I'm your host, Get At Cat, and today we have a very special show. We got the iconic, legendary production duo, Cool and Dre. They're a Grammy-nominated production and songwriting duo from North Miami, Florida. They have an extensive catalog of platinum hits and have worked with the likes of Lil Wayne, Fat Joe, DJ Khaled, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Drake, 50 Cent, Jada Kiss, Chris Brown, Remy Ma, and the list goes on and on and on. But I wanna hear all the background stories and find out about their journey from Miami to the top of the Billboard charts. So without further ado, please welcome Cool and Dre to Box Power Sound, y'all. <laughs> what up, what up? Hey. Yeah, man, what's poppin'? Happy New Year. Happy it's New good. Year. It's a pleasure to have yes. you guys here, yeah. man. I mean. <laughs> pleasure, the pleasure's all ours. Are you in uh, Miami right now? You know it, man, you know, this. that's the, that's the, that's the headquarters right there. That's the base. You know what I'm saying? Miami, Florida, where the weather is just amazing, you know? I, uh, yeah. So my boy Blue. Uh, Trips. I was, oh, there you go. I was on FaceTime with him the other day, and it was pitch black here, storming, snowing. <laughs> He's like, sucks for you. He turns he turns his FaceTime, it's just straight blue skies, man. And palm trees. And palm trees. Look, oh, no. Nah, and and, 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 and the, the weather. Yeah, no, nah, it's crazy. Not big. But y'all in Toronto, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a blizzard here right now. Yo, that went up there. I went, I went out there one time and I was like, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I was like, yo, this cold is different. <laughs> <laughs> it really, cold out here is different. It really is, man. Yeah, nah. So nah, you, we, you guys haven't been here been in the having, summer? Nah, I, 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 I love it. I, the one time I went, I was like, yo, this city's like, it's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, but nah, we're looking forward, definitely looking forward to go back. This la these last two weeks though, we've been having some LA weather out here in Miami. Like it's been like, like 60, you know what I'm saying? Like 70s. Today, today it was like beautiful sunny day. Wow. Like always, it's always, you know what I mean? Like, but the these, like I think this is the longest like cool front that we've had. Cause it wasn't a cold front, you know mm. what I'm saying? Right. But it's been like two weeks of this amazing, like sunny, cool, but it's hot, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Oh, and then at I night it cools it. down. Like I'm, I'm like, yo, this is, I could get used to this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. No, I love it. I actually spent quite a bit of time out in Miami uh, between the years of 2008 and 2010. That's when I was working nice. on my music career. So I wish I would have got up with you guys back then. Well, well then you, Man, look. you met Dre. You have an old picture. I did. I do have an old Dre picture with Dre. Might, and I don't know. If, I don't know if Dre would remember this, but I was uh, backstage at the I Am Music tour. I believe it was in Orlando. I got a picture. I'm gonna pull it up. <laughs> let me see. Let me see if I could. Uh, you it was, sent it to me. Yeah. It, it was dark as hell. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know if you can see. Oh it. wow! Yeah, yeah. But I remember going to Toronto then, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that yeah. was in Florida and I was though. Just remembering like. Oh, I thought it was. I went. I remember going to Toronto in like 08 or 07, and oh. just being like, yo. I love Toronto. I didn't. I thought that's where we took the pick. Yeah, no, I missed you in Toronto, but I, I got up with you there. I was there with Izzy Sanchez. Um, at back then, I was working on my music. So my manager Chloe Cash, she brought me out to the uh, I Music tour. You know, I know Drake and them, so I got up with them at the show, and and then I yeah. seen you, and I was like, I'm a big fan. <laughs> so I got that picture. <laughs> oh, nah, listen, I'm honored. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for I sure. Um, so yeah. 
I have a, I have quite a few questions. I want to really delve into, uh, you know, your whole musical career and I want to go right to the beginning. Uh, but also I want to know like how it feels like, what is it like operating out of Miami? Because I know that everybody looks at Miami as like a vacation party destination, but you guys really like hustled and grinded and represented Miami to the fullest and showed that you could really, really make it out of that city as, you know, prominent producers and songwriters. So how is it? How is it working out of there? I mean, in the beginning, you know, Miami's home. So, you know, in the beginning, it was, it was great for us, you know, locally, because, you know, we had a different sound. Cool and Dre, the Cool and Dre sound. <laughs> Mariah Carey. The cool and Dre sound <laughs> was, was different from what was going on, you know what I'm saying, at the time. But, um, you know, it's like any place else. The only difference was they didn't really respect Miami at that time mm -hmm. for hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So me and Cool used that to our advantage. We were in New York and people were like, yo, these guys from Miami, there's no way they could make hip hop. Miami, it's amazing to be able to, um, you know, be in a city where everyone comes down to, to do their thing. That's another way for me and Cool to network. Exactly. And to get with people, so you know, it's home. You know what I'm saying? For cool sure. And and better. because it is yeah, a party no, no. destination, you guys came out with all the club bangers. That was easy. <laughs> Man, you know that we we go we make a record, and we knew you know we was tight with all the you know we tight with all the DJs. So it's like yo, I'm pulling up. So we literally exactly. like cut a record. And then go to the club and be like, oh man, we gotta mix this a little better. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> but we play, you know, we get the, the vibe, we get the we get the instant club vibe. That's what's up. Same day. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. That's Same that's the day. best so, way no, to really see the records mix right. <laughs> exactly. I always said, I was like, I was like, yo, I've always wanted to do, even though we got an amazing studio, you know what I'm saying, on the lake. I was like, yo, I always wanted to make like mm have like a warehouse, you know what I'm saying? And set up like a humongous like sound stage. Like with I'm talking about yeah. some heavy duty sound system. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. like like some stone love. You know what I'm saying? Vibes. And like literally being there making beats. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And like testing out the music and recording. Like having an experience where the artists would produce the record, they cut the record and they hear it like if they heard it like in, in a mm -hmm. concert setting. You know what right. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm, I'm, that might be something that, that I might be looking into doing this year. Just Why not? I think it'll be dope. You know what I'm saying? Like a like a soundstage um, studio vibe. You know what I'm saying? No because best it's way. no, no, it's better no better feeling. Absolutely. There's no better feeling than hearing the music the way it's supposed to come out. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Exactly. And I know a lot of producers, they like to listen to the record in the car, too. You yeah. got to hear it yeah. bump in the car as well. Mm -hmm. You are uh, you guys familiar with Troy and Rami, Black Shadow? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I worked with I worked with Troyton for some time, and you know, working with him, we used to listen to record everywhere, in the car. We used everywhere. to mix it in the DJ sets. That's how I learned a DJ playing around with the mixer in the studio. Uh, we used to listen to it on the phone, all types yeah. of different speakers. You got but to. what you're talking about is like the final level. Yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it if it if it ain't working in that room. Yeah. Nah, man. Go back to the drawing board. Go back to the drawing board. <laughs> the crazy thing is that um, there's a there's a, um not to get too technical, but uh, Slate, uh, Steve Slate, he has this new uh, plugin, right? So this plugin is actually really really dope. So it comes with a set of headphones, and then this plugin emulates different studios across mm -hmm. the you know what I'm saying different like dope studios like all over. And what they oh. did was they they went to these studios and they 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 were able to to take a, a, a sonic photograph of how the room sounds. You know what I'm saying? So with these okay. headphones, you can pick the room that you can be like in London. Be like, I know the studio in London. I love the way it sounds. Let me let me hear how my mix sounds in there. You know what I'm saying? So he was able to create these different studio sounds and these headphones, you know what I'm saying? And then he also has a thing where you can pick a sound system from a car. So it has like different cars, like BMW, mm. uh, Rolls Royce, uh, this sounds like uh, the Toyota, like the right basic here. sound system. And you hear how it, if you were in that car, 
You know what I'm saying? Nice. So nice. where is this? Where are these headphones? <laughs> I actually seen. No, I saw it's, a face it's, it's, uh, uh, IG ad today. Yeah, yeah. Slate, Slate, um, Slate makes them, and it's basically when you buy the headphone, it comes with the plug-in, and then the That's plug-in incredible. lets you access all these, lets you access all these cars and all these studios. Question is is, is crazy, record but I heard, I heard some amazing, I heard some amazing reviews about them. You know what I'm saying? So, which, so what was dope about that? You could do a mix in your crib. And then put it into that plugin and hear it in all these different studios. So is, is a book record room on plugins. that list? Man, you know what? I got to hit uh, Steve up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And send them. They would have to come and shoot our studio so that way they can get how our room sounds exactly. Yeah. But you can even choose the monitors that you're listening from. So if mm. you want to pick like NS10s or their, their overheads, and it's like supposed to emulate that room to a T. So. Wow. That, so that sounds yeah, like it yeah, might be bigger than the next level than beats, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's up there. Heard yet. I have, yeah, I so we're, we're yet, gonna we're gonna know, touch you know, we're guy, gonna touch base with you after you test them out, and uh, we'll talk yeah, about yeah, it because because that sounds amazing. Um, yeah, so no, yeah, and he's known he's known for good stuff, so I'm sure they're gonna be good. Incredible. Yeah. Dope, dope. Um, so yeah, I wanna I wanna go right back to the beginning. I wanna know how did you guys meet? Cool and Dre. Oh, man. We met we, high we... Go ahead, Dre. Yeah, we met in high school. Um Cool was uh dating someone that was like one of my friends, one of my homies, and um she uh started dating cool and then got him to start coming to choir, like you know, uh <laughs> I was in the music program, like heavy in, in school, and Cool was uh, like DJing, hustling, some of mixtapes. So she she got him to come to choir, you know what I'm saying, and 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 take class. So that's how me and him met, and we got cool really quick, and you know we just shared the same vision, the love mm-hmm. of music, um, we loved R and B, you know, we loved hip hop, and you know we um, started a group with two other guys. One was Cool's friend. And the other one was one of my friends. And then we just got super tight and um, we was trying to make it, you know what I'm saying? On some right. R&B shit. And we couldn't really get nobody to cook up beats for us. And we really didn't have the bread to go buy the beats. So me and Cool put some money together. You know what I'm saying? We borrowed some from here, put it on top of what we had, copped our first keyboard, you know what I'm saying? And just started cooking up. And over time, the beats started to sell themselves. You know what I'm saying? Nice. And, um, you Wait, know, so you guys there was, were there was interested in being product. artists first? Yeah, yeah. We, we, that's, that's, you know, mm-hmm. we only started producing to make beats for the group we was in and mm-hmm. one of our rapper homeboys that was like part of our clique. So that's why we started making music. We, would, we never really, as far as producing music, mm-hmm. we never intended to be uh, producing for everyone. Wow. Stars, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just for our own clique. And then what happened was um, like an epiphany one night, we was at a Taco Bell because really that's all we could afford. And we were sitting in the whip and me and Cool was just, you know, talking about, damn, what if God put us together, not to be in no group, but to be like producers. And I looked at Cool, I was like, man, you crazy. We're going to be the biggest singers <laughs> in the world. What you talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we started you know, um, giving our beats for free in Miami. And then before you know, um, before you knew it, um, these guys that was super cool with these lo- this local rap group, their name was Piccolo. They came to us one day, we would give them beats all the time. They throw us a little money just for, on the love, but you know, they really wasn't buying beats. They were showing love. Mm-hmm. And then one day, uh, my man, Var, he came to us. He was like, yo, I got some niggas that's trying to buy some beats. So, and cool was like charging. We didn't even know what to say. Yeah. So we told him about hundred dollars, put whatever you're gonna put on top of it. And he came back with the bag and that shit was like a light bulb. Me cool was like, oh shit. You know, we was doing it out the love. Mm-hmm. Forget right. it twisted, we want to make money one day. But we was really doing it because we love the, the passion to, to, to make it in the music yeah. business. We don't really mm-hmm. focus on it. So once that happened, we was like, oh, we could we could really do this shit and, and make a living. We opened up a, a, a bank account and we still got the same bank account since we've been like 17, 18 years old. That's yeah. amazing. And it's been it's been nonstop. 
That's amazing. Yeah. That's very inspiring. From high school. And I love it because it just, it happened naturally, <clears throat> right? Like you weren't just hungry for the money. It happened naturally and it happened how it was supposed to. So that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. I, I love that story. Um, so yeah, you, you guys actually, your first credit, like big credit, I believe is from Fat Joe, the King of NY. So how did that come about? Cause you guys coming from yeah, yeah, yeah. the South, going all the way up to New York. Uh, how did that happen? I think our, our homeboy, Robbie Rob, he was like close with Joe, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, uh, you know, Joe hit me up. He's looking for different vibes, different, you know what I mean? He's looking yeah. for some different beats. And I told him I had some guys in Miami. He was like, so put a CD together for me. So back in them days, we used to put like 32 beats on a CD because they were snippets, you know what I'm saying? So we'd put like 32 beats on a CD. And um, uh, I'll never forget the story because Joe told us the story. He said he was in the studio with R. Kelly and he was waiting on the R and uh, he said, pop in that Robbie Rob CD. So he puts the CD in and we put like all kind of different vibes. Thankfully, Dre was like, yo, put like one or two sample vibes on there. You know what I'm saying? For, you know, some hip hop vibes on there. So, like, you know what I'm saying? So beat 28, 29, and then here comes beat number 30 and it's, King of New York, you know what I'm saying? Comes mm -hmm. on and Joe's like, hold on, is that the same CD? And, um, you know, <laughs> long story short, Rob put, puts us on the phone with Joe and Joe was like, yo, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. First of all, I can't believe y'all from Miami made this beat. And two, it's probably my favorite beat of all time. Hey. Jeez, like, so he's like, he's like, he's like, in fact, I'm coming down to Miami. I want y'all in the studio when I record it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So me and Dre was hype. It was like, oh, damn. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, long story short, we ended up meeting Joe. Callie walked in the studio. And Joe was like, Callie was showing. Because, you know, we was doing underground radio. You know what I'm saying? And Callie was on the underground radio circuit. And, um, you know, we ended up giving Callie our slot and going to Atlanta trying to pursue our, our song, our singing careers. And... You know, so we was tight with Khaled, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so here comes walks in Khaled and Joe's like, he sees Khaled show me and Dre love and Joe's like, you know these guys? Like, yo, these are my guys, cool. <laughs> they come to radio, blah, blah, blah. And it was just like- Joe's you know, energy too, man. Yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe and like, Khaled. Oh, Khaled yeah. Both their energy. Yeah, he's like, yo, Khaled, you fuck with Cool and Dre. So I fuck with Cool and Dre, we, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> from that, from that session, we literally, every time Joe would come in the city, we'd be with Joe, you know what I'm saying? Like he would be either it. in the studio or or we'd be in the club with him. And he always, always had, you know what I'm saying? Like brought us into his family mm -hmm. and it's been nonstop since. You know what and saying? for you guys, literally. did you guys look view him as like a legend out of New York too? Cause he was there with Big Pun. Definitely. Doing some major things, right? So yeah, it was a look, huge and like my pops, Rest in peace. My pops put me on a Fat Joe as a kid. My pops wow. was listening to Jodeci. I was listening to a Jodeci CD. Yeah. And my pops was like, and he's Jamaican. So he was trying to have me listening to R&B shit like that. <laughs> so he was like, you need to, why are you listening to that? You need to listen to some Fat Joe. You got to flow, Joe. You got to flow. <laughs> he wants you in the streets. <laughs> Yeah, which was which which was crazy. So, but we always had respect for Fat Joe. We always knew he was a right. big artist. He's somebody we see on TV. He's somebody we see in the magazines. That's Fat Joe. Yeah. When we got into the studio with him, he pressed play on "We Thuggin'," a record with R. Kelly, and yeah, it blew yeah. us away because that shit sounded like something Jay Z would do. Like you know what I'm saying? And and at that time. You know, Jay Z's the biggest star in the world. Right. Fat Joe is still Fat Joe, but you know, we look at Jay Z like this guy played a record that was on the level. Like, you no, know, before we thought it, Fat Joe was straight underground, yeah. hip hop, mm -hmm. hardcore. Big Pun made the radio records, but Joe was still digging in the crates. So yes. when he played that song, we really got hyped because then we felt like, oh, we're we're about to be part of something special because yeah. I got a song with R. Kelly. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, and it all it came just, full circle. Yeah, because that, that, that R&B side. Was, 
Yeah, that album was was ended up being Joe's first platinum solo album. Yeah. And then and, Bantan was on the record. And he put Buja Bantan on King of New York, and it was the it opened Jeez. the album up. We love opening the albums up because we Buju. set the tone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. For what's about to happen. I so, love it, man. So I, I, I'll never forget being in New York and, and listening to Funk Flex play that King of New York, bringing that, dropping bombs and bringing it back, back. It was like an amazing yeah. vibe. You know what I'm saying? It must so, have been so yeah, no, that was That was the foundation. Yeah. Speaking Definitely. of Fat Joe being the first for them in terms of placement, Fat Joe was actually my first uh, major interview when I was on radio, back wow. when All The Way Up came up. Wow. I don't remember if you guys remember, we, we actually lined that up with Ted. Um, the yep. the yeah. He was on with me that Friday and then he was on with Breakfast Club later that, uh, actually, you know, Thursday. And then he was on with Breakfast Club that Friday. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that was that was such an amazing interview because the whole island heard that. This was when I was in the Bahamas. And I just remember my phone blowing up. Everyone's <laughs> driving. This is like 6.30 in the evening. He's a big traffic. deal. <laughs> and All The Way Up was a big record. Yeah. That's, a, that's when um, Remy Ma just got out of jail too. So yeah, yeah. the wave yes. where her was, was at a very high level for sure, yeah. and and so that record that was that went multi platinum, and that's the yeah. song yeah. that you got a Grammy nomination for, correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All the way up is special because um, it was a period in in Fool and Dre's career as well as Fat Joe's career where they counted us out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They said that Cool and Dre was over, Fat Joe was over, Joe had Cut. just came home from doing like a four or five month bid. Um, and we had been there, we had been in this place before where they count you out. The first time they counted us out, it was a weird feeling because, you know, we, me and Cool was on like, our, once, once hated to love it, New York hit, you know, me and Cool went on a good five year run. You know what I'm saying? So the first oh, yeah. time they counted us out, it was like, what? Like we didn't, I couldn't understand that feeling. Like when the phone yeah. was in. And what do you like, mean we're done? Back. So this was the second time, and um, it just was amazing because you know Joe had came out, came home with a new mindset. He's like, "Yo, I don't want beef with nobody." You know, he, him, and Fifty Cent ended up shaking hands. You know what I'm saying? He had reached to, to Hove, and they, 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 they had a new clarity, and they were seeing eye to eye. So you know, he had mended some fences. You know, he had a whole new outlook on life. So when that record came out. It was so massive. And then at the same time, um, we broke uh, Kent Jones' record, Don't Mind. And, you know, he's an artist Ooh. on the epic. It's another, so, another interview I had with y'all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that, 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 both those records ha happened at the same time. And, you know, Cool and I have always been trying to um, break an artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We look at Dr. Dre, Organized Noise, Puff Daddy, you know, guys who uh, open up the door for a Biggie Smalls, yes. open up the door, you know what I'm saying, for a Snoop Dogg or Eminem, like, you know, open up the doors, like, organize those for Outkast, Goody Mob. So we feel as producers, that should be our sole responsibility is to Absolutely. introduce new artists to the game and God willing, they become the next Snoop Dogg or you know what I'm saying, or the next Outkast. So his record breaking was, was huge for me and cool because it was the first time we had an artist uh, pop off and then our brother Fat Joe, humongous record. Then the remix with um, Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All that shit uh, was just amazing time. Amazing time. And I can't even believe that they tried to count you out because you've definitely produced uh, some of my favorite songs of all time. You know, and oh, it goes back to like, definitely Fat Joe to Blow with Rick Ross. Hated to love it for me. Hated to love it, Take Me Home. Like, you know, oh, like I could, I, Take Me Home was definitely, that's, I think Take Me Home was the first time I seen Dre like in front of the camera. I yeah. think for me, you know, um, but you were like, you were in the video and singing and all that stuff. Listen, and that, Dre that was said my he wanted to be song. the biggest R&B artist <laughs> in the world. <laughs> he, I, I feel like he still believes that. <laughs> but you know what? Those vocals nah, on nah, Blow, we got, we got those vocals on Blow can go. Album. <laughs> the Dre album is coming. The Dre album, Dre. Talk to them about that album, Dre. Yeah, dropping in 2021. Um, hey. This album is in the making. It's already People done. Being ready for me to put out 
um, me and Joe, we did a record called So Excited a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even trying to be on that. I just did a reference for him to go get another artist to do. But, you know, uh, he couldn't find anyone to deliver it the way I did it. And that's happened before in our career. Like, yeah. um, wait, let me guess. Uh, let me guess which song. Then you for, do that for, with a song with Chris Brown? Or was it Chris Brown and Khaled? I believe it was a story where you were walking around the house and you were singing a song. Man, I'm trying to remember which one it was. I'm pretty sure this probably happened with multiple songs, right? You would just walk around the house, you were, you were singing something and stuck in your head. And I remember hearing this interview somewhere. Oh, no, that's, a, that's Gold Slugs. Yes, Gold Slugs, gold. yes. Oh, shit, that's a big record. <laughs> He's the goat. Yeah. And anytime I've like referenced something for a Chris Brown record, he he nails. He's Chris Brown. Yeah. But for like you know the so excited record that me and Joe had, um, it ended up taking off crazy. Like it went top five in the country, and I wasn't even trying to be back on no artist shit. But Joe and Cool, you know, was really pushing. Like yo, Dre. Like you gotta accept the gifts God gave you. Like yo, they're going crazy. And then I got an email from 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 Jay Z telling me, "Hey yo, take this shit serious, man, because you know, you're good, bro. Like you should do that." And you so, gotta listen when Jay Z tells you that. <laughs> oh no, nah. that boosts the shit out of my confidence. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For I don't, real. That 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 was that was great to to, to see. So you know, my album is is ninety five percent done. Me and Cool are um, about to start mixing and mastering it. I'm reaching for two really big features on there, and um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a hell of a ride, and it's Shit. gonna be a surprise. And so far, the people that I've like let hear a couple records have been blown away, which Great is great feedback. Thing. We can't wait. Well, we can't wait to break it here on Box Power Sound yeah. and on Key Radio for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when it comes to engineering and mastering and all that stuff, <clears throat> you guys do all that. Do you work with Lou Diaz? I, I've worked with Lou Diaz before. Back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But Cool is Cool is an amazing engineer in his own right. He mixed all the way up. You know, recently we've been using uh, Jason Joshua to, to mm -hmm. out of LA yeah. to mix a bunch of our records. But you know, okay. Cool mixes a lot. He's, he's, yeah, he's it's got... it's it's great. We we we've been able to um, put together an amazing team for you know we know who. To and what to depending on the record you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so we've been leaning on our brother jason joshua a lot lately because he's just got an amazing amazing sonic ear you know what i'm saying and um we just we just love because he brings he brings a different energy to the to the table you know what i'm saying That's and then um <clears throat> our, our uh smitty is is our recording engineer you know what i'm saying and um you know was, we got a great team we got a great team it. epidemic we got a a dope team of so, 808 Ray. We got some amazing guys on the team. So what's your working dynamic between Cool and Dre? Does Dre right. do more of the writing and then Cool, you do more on the production end or you guys kind of just collaborate on um, every aspect? Yeah, every aspect. Like it, it, it's, we, the good thing about us that we, we're both, like if Dre needed to record himself, you know what I'm saying? On, on, at the house, whatever for the, especially now with you know with quarantining and different things like that, mm -hmm. you know we've definitely been working more out of our, out of our personal spaces. Uh, but we could pretty much do everything, man. You know what I'm saying? But it might be a situation where Drill send something that's pretty much done, and I'll just tweak it and mix it. You know what I'm saying? And get the mm -hmm. sonic sounding right, or I send something to Dre, and Dre be like, "Yo, take these this snare out here and add." You know what I'm saying? This vibe, or he'll come up with a hook. So there's no, there's not, there's not really a set formula. The goal right. is just an amazing record and, and something make you feel good. You know what I'm saying? Of course. That's man, always been our thing, man. Feel good shit. Y'all been working together for decades. So you just, you know, you yep. just kind of have this <clears throat> mesh <laughs> and it just works. Yeah, we kind of, we kind of know. It's like second nature now. You know what Exactly. I'm it's just finding dope ideas, what works. Right. And just, just going with it. So. And where do you find your inspiration? Like, could you be on vacation or in a different country and you kind of think, you know, or are you dancing with your family, listening to some old records? You know, where where does it come from? Like all different places? Music is everywhere. You could be at a restaurant and <clears throat> might hear something on the speakers in the restaurant and be like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
and literally like yeah. Shazam trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know <laughs> it's because the, you don't want to lose the moment. For There's sure. so many different ways. Right. So yeah, many no, different absolutely. Ways. And uh, so how did Sunshine come about? I, what I was thinking was Fat Joe and Callie came knocking on the door saying, it's time to bring in the light. <laughs> it's time to bring the light in. <laughs> but I mean, you guys uh, killed it with Rihanna, Kiss It Better, and the Luther Vandross Never Too Much, two of my favorite songs ever, and you created that fusion. So tell us exactly how that formulated. Well, um, like who was saying, inspiration uh, comes comes from everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Right. So um, one morning I woke up really early. Yo! Yo, hey, go like, he goes, he sounded he sound like a big dog. Like hey, a real I ain't no, I ain't no puppy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, <clears throat> I woke up really early, like seven o'clock. And, you know, first thing I do is I say, you know, I, I give thanks. I thank God for waking me up to see another day. That's the first thing I do. I try my best to always do that. I know we so, we in a, in a rush to look at the phone when we wake up. So, um, I did that, I got on the phone, I'm on Instagram, I'm just searching through my Instagram. And then Instagram takes you to a whole other, to people you don't even follow. Yeah. Right? So I see this kid and he's got his DJ headphones on and he's playing the Luther Vandross. And then out of nowhere, these Rihanna vocals come in. I'm like, Ooh. this shit is incredible. So I search his page and he's doing it to a bunch of other records. And it reminded me of when me and Cool was young, we used to take instrumentals of other records and put them with acapellas of other songs and like mash them up. You feel right. me? Like one of the ones we was famous for here in Miami, we took Boys to Men, Water Runs Dry, and we put Mob Deep Shook Ones oh, acapella shit. over that. I never even heard that, but that's amazing. That just sounds like that. <laughs> that again not because of the sunshine so yeah we come from that so the right when i seen that it brought me back to when i was a kid i was like oh wow this is incredible i was like but this is a record this needs to be a real record right so i i i, I, I uh screen recorded the shit and immediately like it, it hit me in 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 my my body i said oh no this is fucking out of here if it's done right so i called joe joe was on vacation with Khaled. I say, yo, Joe, I got one. He goes, yo, Dre, you don't say that. He goes, you probably said that two or three times since I've known who and Dre. Y'all probably said that two or three times. Y'all always get the hit to somebody else. Mm -hmm. What is it? I say, yo, bro, I just seen something. I'm going to send you the video. And when you see this video, you're going to understand. So I sent him this, the video, and him and Cal call me FaceTime. Oh my God! <laughs> this is it. Bro, get cool on the phone. Produce this shit, please. This is gonna be crazy. So I get it. Me and Cool go to work immediately. You know, um, we did what we did as producers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Produced the record, flushed it out, gave it a bridge, gave it an outro, made it feel like a vibe, and then got it to Joe. And then we went to. Um, we went to Khaled's house to, to write it. And we usually record at me and Cool studio, but the studio was booked and it was packed. So we was at Khaled's house this night and we just sat down, we wrote it together. Me and Joe looked at each other and he was like, yo, this is gonna be crazy. Yeah. And I can remember, and the thing about the hardest critic in the world is that guy, that blue and white sweater. I'll never forget. <laughs> This guy don't believe nothing is a hit. No. <laughs> what do you say? He, it's a hit. Because he don't call nothing a hit. Right? Oh, wow. So I sent him the video of the kid with the shit, and Cool said, oh, no. <laughs> the Cool was like, yo, this is going to be a monster. We'll be done with it. Yeah. After, after we, we, we cut it, we got it mixed. You know, the first thing we did was we reached to the kid. His name was Amorphous. He's featured on there. We made sure we featured him on the record as right, well. Right. You know what I'm saying? Things. And um, let them know, like, yo, know, you inspired something amazing. And it feels good, man, because it's good to give young and upcoming talent that kind Absolutely. of spotlight. Yeah. <clears throat> because that, rec that record only was cleared 
because of Joe's relationships. Yep. Like Yana has never cleared her vocals in this manner ever, but she that's did it crazy. because she loves Joe. That's crazy. And that's actually Luther one Bandra. of the questions I had for you too. How, how are you able to clear yeah, that? No, she don't do it. But she loves Joe. So she did it for Joe. Amazing. Luther Vandross, his, they don't clear his records and his music anymore. But Luther Vandross is a state. They love Joe. So they cleared it for Joe. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. So you know, everybody, everyone played a role yeah. for this for this thing to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and and it's amazing and it's great. And then the name of the title, we were gonna call the record Kiss It, but then we was like, yo, it's too close to the the Kiss It Better. Right. And Joe was just like, yo, man, what's we got coming with another title? I was like, fuck it. We've been talking this sunshine and this light yeah. for like the last couple months. Fuck it. It's and called she says it, it's it's in the lyric too. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I love you know, it. When I first heard it, I was blown away. I was like, "Yes, <laughs> yes." yes. yes. So, like, so officially started okay. when that dropped. Oh yeah. Yeah. Told you how me and Cool met Joe and Callum was there. So it's like it's just amazing. Full circle. Full, full circle. circle. Full circle moment. And after all these years, you know, um, to be as close as we are and to still be relevant. You know, um, my our brother Joe Crack been doing this from 1992. Mm -hmm. You know, me and Cool, we we 20 years in the game. We've been doing it since 16, 17. So you know, it just we always tell people, man, music is forever. Music is timeless. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? As long as you keep a sharp mind, as long as you stay focused, right? And um, you can, you can exist and create things. Cause like the kids that's like eight years old, this record sunshine, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like the world needs it right now. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? We're in such it, a weird It came spot. at a very perfect time. Like it's such a yeah. beautiful thing and very inspiring. So how about you guys introduce it right now? We're going to play it for everybody to listen to. Introduce the record. Well, what up, it's your homie Cool. What up, what up? This is the D-R-E. This cool and Dre, y'all know what it is. It's the brand new single, Fat Joe featuring Amorphous, DJ Khaled, produced by none other than Cool and Dre. It's called Sunshine, The Light. You're gonna be hearing this all year. So get, used, get, it. get used to it. Mm. Embrace the light. Let's go. Right here on Box Power Show. Yeah. Yeah. Cool and Dre. It's 2021. 